Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the various forms of alpha. A friend from Singapore actually asked a question about it and that has prompted this video. Let us begin by first of all looking at alpha from the standpoint of the single index model. Well, let us write the equation for the single index model here. The single index model says that the average excess return on a security can be written as alpha of the security plus beta of the security times the average excess return on the market. Well, I ran a regression earlier and I have here reproduced some of the results from there. I took a sample stock on which the average return was 0.0092 the risk-free rate, the average of that was 0 0.007. The average excess return on the market was equal to negative 0 0.008. And when the regression was run, it gave me these two estimates for the intercept and slope. So 0 0.0112, which is my intercept for the single index model, became the estimate for my alpha. And 1.11 which is the slope coefficient from the regression became my estimate for the beta of the security. So from this information we can quickly note that the alpha of this security is 0 0.0112. Let me highlight it here in red for you. This is the alpha of the security from the single index model. We can also write the security's average excess return using the single index model. So while we are doing this, let us quickly write the average excess return on this security, which is going to be equal to, according to our estimates here, alpha of the security, which is 0 0.0112, plus beta of the security, which is 1.11, multiplied by the average excess return from the market, which is negative 0 0.008. So let us plug in that number here. If you solve this on the calculator, you're going to get 0 0.0024 and that is the average excess return on this security as given to us by the single index model. Now let us look at alpha from CAPM's viewpoint. And for doing that, we are going to have to look at the equation for the SML. We know that we can write the SML equation as follows. Ri bar minus Rf bar, which is our um, average excess return on the security. And this can be predicted as being equal to the beta of the security times the average excess return on the market. So this is our SML. Let's go on labeling what we are writing. This was our single index. index model and this one here is the SML. So let us see what is the prediction of the CAPM. So if we use this SML equation let us see what average excess return do we get for our security. What is our beta? We have 1.11 as our beta and what is our average excess return on the market? It is equal to minus 0.008. So the calculator result for this is going to be minus 0 0.0088. So what do we see now? This return that we have obtained here, this predicted return from the CAPM, is different from what we got before. This was our average excess return on the security as we found out from the single index model. But the CAPM prediction is pretty much different. In fact, the return is negative here. And we are getting actually more excess return on an average as compared to the CAPM prediction. The difference then must be the alpha which we can write as this. Alpha of i must be then the difference between this item here which is our average excess return on the security and this item here which is the average excess return on the security as predicted by the CAPM. So the, the difference between the actual and the predicted must be our alpha. 
So let us write alpha as being equal to Ri bar minus Rf bar minus the prediction from the CAPM, which is beta of I times the average excess return on the market. If we plug in our numbers for this part here, we have 0 0.0024. This comes from the single index model. And this part here, which we are subtracting, comes from the CAPM's prediction. So we are going to have to write here minus minus 0 0.0088 and the calculator result for this is going to be 0 0.0112 which is the same alpha value as we found here from the single index model regression. So well we have seen an alternative way to look at alpha. Let us continue to work with this equation here. Let's rearrange this one slightly. Let's say alpha of i can also be written as ri bar minus and then I'm going to start a bracket and take the remaining terms inside the bracket which will mean that this minus rf bar is going to come here as a plus rf bar and this term here is also going to come here with a plus sign. So let me finish writing that and then we can talk about it. Alright so all the brackets are closed. Well if we write the alpha this way then we have actually written what we see in the books as the Jensen's alpha and if we plug in our numbers here to just check if we get the same value of alpha or not we are going to find that this ri bar well we had a value for this before let me scroll up and see what value was it ri bar was equal to this item here 0 0.0092 so let me copy this value down so for ri bar that is my average return on the security is 0 0.0092 minus inside the bracket here I need to write the average risk free rate the estimate for that is let us see how much here is that estimate here 0 0.007 so I can write here 0 0.007 plus we know that the beta of this security is 1.11 so let's write that quickly and then the average excess return from the market we know it is equal to minus 0 0.008 let's close the brackets and if we do this thing on the calculator your result is going to be equal to 0 0.011 which is pretty much the same as we got before here 0 0.0112 here and a 0 0.0112 here. What you are going to observe here in this equation that the quantity inside this square bracket this one let me highlight it again this quantity here inside the square bracket is nothing but the SML equation rearranged for ri bar. So all that we are doing is that we are subtracting the CAPM's predicted return on the security from its average return. The average return is here. Alright, let us look at the alpha from another angle now. We are going to continue to work with the SML equation for some more time. We know our SML equation is right here. If I take this RF bar over to the other side, I'm going to rewrite the equation just for RI bar, that is my average return on the security. Rather than saying average excess returns on the security, I'm just rewriting the SML for average returns on the security by taking the RF item onto the other side. So we can rewrite the SML equation as being equal to RF bar plus beta of i times rm bar minus rf bar. What I'm going to do now is to rearrange the terms on the right hand side and rewrite ri bar as being equal to rf bar plus I'm multiplying out the beta with the terms inside with the items inside the bracket so I have beta of i times rm bar minus beta of i times rf 
bar. We can now collect the RF bar terms together. So if I do that, this is what I'm going to get. If I collect the RF bar terms together, I'm going to get from here 1 and from this term I'm going to get minus beta i and then this term will remain so I'm going to write it here plus beta i beta i times rm bar all right so what we have is a definition for ri bar here we also know that ri bar can be calculated through a simple linear regression by simply regressing the average market returns on average stock returns or average security returns. If we run that regression we are going to of course have an intercept let's call that A. We are going to have a slope coefficient which I'm writing again as beta i and then we are going to have R m bar. So we can draw a parallel between these two equations now. Because the left hand sides of these two equations are equal the right hand sides must also be equal and on the right hand side this term here is the same as this term which means that this a must be equal to this item here and that is exactly what we are going to write so let me make some space here and write that for you if the CAPM is true then a from our second equation this one must be equal to RF bar times 1 minus beta i. We can rewrite this by taking this entire term over to the left hand side. We can rewrite this as A minus RF bar times 1 minus beta i beta i should be equal to 0, isn't it? So if the CAPM is true and its results hold, then the difference between this A and this RF bar times 1 minus beta I should be 0. What would happen if a stock outperforms the CAPM's prediction? Then the, this difference is going to become positive, isn't it? Oh, I shouldn't have write A bar, so let me strike that off. A minus rf bar times 1 minus beta i is going to be then greater than 0. Isn't that right? And if the stock underperforms the CAPM's prediction, then this whole item is going to be less than 0. This here, a minus rf bar times 1 minus beta i is another way to express our Jensen's alpha. Let us quickly test if we get the same value of alpha as before by using this definition for alpha now. But to use this definition, we need a value for A. We don't have a value of A as yet. In order to get the value for A, what we need to do is to regress the average market return on the average stock return. I already did that for my sample stock. And from that regression, I obtained the estimates for A and the slope. Let me make some space here and give you those estimates. A was equal to 0 0.010508 and the slope item which I'm continuing to call as beta i was equal to 1 1.13055. If I insert these numbers here into this relationship, this is how it is going to look like. I'm going to have my alpha of the security as being equal to A, which is 0 0.010508, minus the average risk-free rate. We know that from before. It was equal to 0 0.007 times 1 minus the slope which is 1.13055 13055 
If we solve this on the calculator, the result you can verify is going to be equal to 0 0.011, which is again the same alpha that we obtained before. Well, we can compare this 0 0.011 with, if I scroll up here, with this 0 0.011 here, and this 0 0.011 can be compared with this 0 0.011 here, and this one can again be compared with the original estimate of our alpha, which was again 0 0.011 here. So we have the same estimate of alpha, no matter how we are choosing to define it. Let us then summarize the various ways to look at alpha. Let's write here, number one, alpha of i is simply equal to the intercept. Intercept from where? From our single index model. What is our second definition? That alpha of i is equal to ri bar minus rf which we got from the single index model and from which we subtracted the CAPM's prediction which was beta i times the average excess return on the market. What was our third way to look at alpha? The third way to look at alpha was when we rearranged this equation and got to the Jensen's alpha which was equal to ri bar minus rf bar plus beta of i times rm bar minus rf. This was our third way. And the fourth way to look at our alpha was that alpha of a security can be written as a minus rf bar times 1 minus beta i. And this we obtained by manipulating the CAPM equation and this this a here you will remember we obtained by running a regression between the average market returns and average stock returns. Well this is all I wanted to tell you in this video. See you later.